The murder of a 19-year-old teenager from New Jersey is now starting to gain some traction, some national attention. That's, though, after a radio host argued that his death proves jihad is already reaching U.S. shores. It is here. First, I want to tell you a little bit about Brendan Tevlin, the victim in this. He was an honor student, never in any trouble. He just finished his first year of college. Back in June, Brendan was driving the family car, coming from a friend's home, alone, stopped at a traffic light when he was hit eight times, shot and killed. Police initially said it was a targeted attack, but that turned out not to be true at all in their investigation. Weeks later, this man was arrested, the man you see now on the right side of your screen, accused of killing Brendan and three other men in Washington state as well. So he had already murdered, police say, and then this kid was killed. He told police the murders were carried out as revenge for U.S. military action in the Middle East. He also said, quote, and this is what he said to police, all these lives are taken every single day by America, by this government, so a life for a life, end quote. Many feel the story has not gotten the attention it deserves, again, until that radio host said the discussion has to begin. One can only imagine the utter fear and horror that went through his mind as this brutal attack was being carried out. Imagine for a minute that this was your child, your son or daughter, innocent of everything and anything. He was a young boy who was killed for being an American. The bottom line is this, domestic terrorism is already here. And we need to talk about it. All right, so Andrea, I went on to read the rest of the statement that he had given to mm -hmm. police, right? And, and it was basically just his confession, although he's since then now pleaded not guilty to the crimes he's accused of. And what he says is, this kid was alone, he was American, he doesn't like what we're doing in Iraq and Afghanistan, and so that's why he was killed. In the United States of America. And Jersey. where are we hearing about this from a radio show? Where is the media on this? I mean, this story is disgusting. And this is why it's so important when you see Megyn Kelly interview professors like Ward Churchill, because what Ward Churchill has said in past is what this jihadist has said in past. This is a growing trend. We've heard small reports in New York City about apprehending domestic terrorists, how we were spying on mosques because more and more uh, Muslims are being radicalized in the United States. We hear about honor killings in Michigan, parents who are fathers who are killing their daughters uh, in the name of radical Islam. This is a problem. And if we don't wake up to it, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's shameful that the story has not gotten the coverage that it's gotten. Well, you know, Kirsten, I want to ask about this. The administration has been so careful uh, to say that, and we saw this in the president's speech this week, that we are safe here at home and that we're going to fight them over there, which is like reminiscent of what we mm -hmm. said a decade ago. Um, but we don't have to wait for anybody to board a plane. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Well, no, and, and, and this was one of my criticisms of his speech was that he didn't address that. He, he, he didn't address the fact that I mean, we all, everybody knows that they have American passports or, or Western passports and they can get into the country and that they're in the country currently. And so what is being done uh, doesn't have to give us specifics, you know, but, but acknowledge that, you know, something is being done and that they're aware of the threat. You know, I want to talk about the mindset, though, of where we are here in America, because, I mean, this is a guy who's living among us, a fellow American, right? And from what I understand, I've been living in a tent behind a church. Uh, so he was out of sight until he decided to kind of come out and, and wage his jihad. Where are we in this? I mean, what about our consciousness needs to be awakened, Montel? You know, and again, you know, this is why I got this new moniker on my Twitter page right now that's calling me just left of right or just right of left. Because I don't know where I, where I sit on this. Is all of a sudden we're saying, and on this, this, here's the headline from this. Brendan Tallon's murder is evidence that domestic terrorism is already here. Well, folks, excuse me. In 2012, we had over 5,700 incidents of domestic terrorism. We had race or hate crimes against people in this country. We have over 7,100 victims. People were just walking down the street because they were gay, they were black, they were Jewish, they were Asian American, and we had this happen. This is called domestic terrorism. In this country right now, we have anti-separatist groups, and the, their, uh, their uh, uh, roles and ranks have increased by over 57% in America today. So, yeah, we have this guy right here who's bringing jihad here. 
We have jihad on our shores but, against but, Americans Michael, with anyway. With all due respect, I think you conflating hate crimes against gays in the United no. States of America is a little bit different than the rise I'm of using radical the same Islamic term jihadism that the and FBI the murderous uses. radical cult. If you bring Army up the FBI that is marching statistics. through the Middle East, that is using the internet to well, radicalize Americans here. Look at the kill FBI us. statistics. They call I it domestic terrorism. They call it domestic of terrorism. Of course they do. They Under call Republicans numbers. and Tea Partiers domestic terrorists. Yeah, but when we have 7,000 people injured and hurt, and now you want to say that it's just gotten here, it's all they call this man remember, made. They call terrorists. Remember, this we, Homeland Security Department is so warped, they call domestic acts of terror what, man made? I mean, they're so politically correct. It's or gross. Workplace violence, uh, you know, like yeah, let, Major Nadal Hassan. Yeah, but let's also make sure we remember one death in seven thousand incidents. Let's talk about domestic terrorism. It's not what one death. Do? Well, this man has killed four. Do? One kid four. in New Jersey. Was, three we also in had the, the, we had the bombing in Boston. We've also had you know we had all, I think it was over three hundred. No, well, the, more than five hundred. Let's talk about that for a second. Oklahoma. The bombing in Boston. Terrorism's here. Because today, and, and, and you can read this for yourself, uh, the mosque where the Sarnaya brothers were tied to was were tied to is the same mosque where uh, the man who our government says was behind the beheadings of James Foley and Stephen Sotloff attended. So if you want to, I, I mean, separate from whatever you're saying is domestic terrorism with, you know, hate crime. We are at war. You don't want to use the word. We were at war with Al-Qaeda, and they weren't an Islamic State either. We are at war with ISIS right now. Real quickly, Kimberly, Yeah, thoughts. just real quickly. I mean, I, don't, I think we're all agreeing that, yes, terrorism here, you want to focus on a broader picture of different categories. What we're talking about right here is what's going on in this country with jihadists and with radicalism. Are they here? Do they have the capability for more to come here? Absolutely. Do we have porous borders? Do we have passport issues? Do we have a very serious national security issue? Yes, that is the topic of this conversation. Conversation. This conversation, almost 14 years ago, two people were in the back of a car, one a Muslim, traveling around the D.C. area, shooting people out of the back of the car. Terrorism has been here. Oh. Okay, but 13 been years here. ago, a hate crime was not committed when two skyscrapers had planes fly into them and over 2,000 people died. And this is a, a radical Islamic Why jihadist issue. And the, more, and, the, and the more that we just say radicalism in general... We are being fools by doing that All right. and ignoring the threat of radical Islamic jihadism yeah. specifically. About 7,000 families would I, I say that they're not back. foolish for mourning the incidents that happened. I think the, victim, I think I the victims this. of 9-11 would disagree. And, and I want to concentrate on the victim in this, too. You'd you know, say that 7,000 people this, this whose, whose families were hurt by domestic terrorism would not have a right to say that they, they mourn their, their 7,000 victims? You think... That radical Islamic jihad is not the exact it to, same I'm just thing. talking about but one thing. But you did compare them. I did not. I you said I all of it under the same both. umbrella. I mean, I think it's supposed to be concerned about I think both. they're not under the same umbrella. I, I, I want to pick up. We, on do, what we have to said agree to disagree before we run out of time here because I think it's important. You talked about the victims uh, on 9/11. Of course, that's what we've been thinking about so much this week. But this 19-year-old Brendan Tevlin had something in common with them, and that was that it was random and that he was hit because he was an American. And that could happen to any of us. This was a special young man. Mm -hmm. By the accounts of anybody student. you talk with, he made the world better. He was a blessing. Yes, I live in New Jersey, and so I know a little bit more about the story, but it's starting to gain traction for it. Watch for it. Not just here on Fox. I'm hoping other media will pick it up, too. Because whatever you want to call it that ISIS would love to see happen on our shores, it's already happening.